My name is Antonio D. Anderson. I, uh, I am an educator, uh, work at South Philadelphia High School currently and have about 600 students. I'm also a pastor of a church called Hope Church Philly right here in the West Oak Lane section of Philadelphia. And, um, you know, husband and a father, two precious daughters. And born right, reared right here in Philadelphia. You know, um, in high school, uh, I had a teacher uh, named Flora um, who kept pushing me to say, Antonio, you can write really well. I want you to pursue, you know, English, become an English major. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of pain coming in high school. And one of my ways to alleviate the pain was just to write, just to write, just to write, just to write, just to write. And I found myself, um, I became an English major in high school, and I just wrote, 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 wrote. And that's always been my strength um, is to become a writer, just to, you know, having teachers push me in that direction. Right, I, I read, I read a lot. You know, every week I'm reading, I try to read a new book, uh, complete a book. And I realize that there are so many stories that need to be told. And even our stories are not shared as much as I would like. Or positive examples um, are shared in reading is where it can inspire people. And so I really wanted to write something to empower and inspire people. Um, just to have a greater sense of life and a greater sense of their calling on this earth. I think it's very pivotal is that if you're going to write anything, it must be to a point where it's explained, it's factual. Um, in this day and time, there's so much fake news, fake stories, uh, unreal stuff. You know, to me, I don't, have a, I don't have time to read anything that's not going to inspire me or even challenge me uh, who I am. And so I think the writer has a responsibility to the reader to make sure they write stuff that's factual. Um, that it can help someone and not just out for their own gain. You can write anything, um, but to me, if it's not empowering, if it's not inspiring, and if I'm not helping nobody with my writing, then I'm not going to write it. And I think that all writers should at least try their best to be factual um, so that the reader can get it, can be inspired with it, uh, can learn from it, and can grow with it. Writers, 100%. You know, it's, you know, for me, my downtime between writing is reading. There are so many awesome books and authors that I love and admire and respect and new authors coming through um, who are writing some powerful stories. And I think that if you're going to be a writer, you first must be a reader. You must be a lover of the art um, that is before you. Um, and you must be able to appreciate other authors. You know, as a new author coming in, I appreciate the encouragement that I receive from other authors writing my book. And that's very important. Uh, so definitely writers uh, should be readers. You know, I think writing is an art form. And as artistic as the writer can be, or she can be, um, they should be, because it's interesting that no one has the same story to tell. Another one can't always interpret your story if it's not told from your perspective. So I think the challenge for writers is to use writing as an art form, be artistic as you can be, but also be as simple as you can be to the reader. Uh, and so if you can insert stories, uh, if you can tell a different story, or if you can tell of a broken heart, you know, how are you giving that to the reader and how are they going to learn from it? Or can I find something that's entertaining as Jack and the Beanstalk? And can I, you know, enjoy myself in the writing? Because everything doesn't have to be serious. You know, there's, there needs to be some, you know, all kinds of writing. There's fiction, nonfiction, there's, you know, stories to be told, you know, children's books. There's so many different genres of writing um, that just want not one particular way um, to write. So you must be artistic and tell your story as best you can. This is my uh, first book uh, that I've ever written. Um, it's called uh, Seven Successful Principles for Single Mothers Raising Sons. And uh, this book was just really taken out of my life context where, you know, I was born to a 16-year-old uh, young lady uh, who attended grad high school in ninth grade, um, dropped out of ninth grade to take care of her son and to raise him to be the best person he could be. 
And uh, my mom raised me with some principles. And I took seven principles that my mom used in raising me. And I shared them with other single mothers. Um, you know, this book is a lifelong dream of mine. I should be able to share, to empower uh, single mothers everywhere. Uh, so I'm excited about this book. And I just wanted to empower and inspire single mothers uh, and let them know that, you know, you cannot teach your son to be a man, but you can raise a great person. You know, one of the things I've discovered is that, you know, this book is entire to help. And I've discovered this is that the few people who I've let preview the copy, uh, you know, they had just fallen in love with the book. And what I was trying to do, not to preach, but to give you perspective from a young man's point of view. Because young men uh, internalize stuff. They don't always vocally express themselves. And so I grew up, I internalized a lot of things that I've seen and didn't always express you know, my feelings to my mother. And so I want to share um, to the mothers how young men internalize their feelings, their emotions. They may not always say it, but you know by their actions, you know, how they're feeling or how they're thinking. And so I want to give mothers, single mothers, an insight into how their sons think and how they act, you know, based on what they see in the home. Yeah, I'm a climate manager. That means I'm an administrator. I'm in charge of all discipline and behavior. And so all the children, uh, whenever something's wrong, they have to come see me. And, uh, you know, for me, my goal is not to suspend. My goal is to get the story. My goal is to find out what's happening at home, what's happening at the community, because all that affects the child. And once you get the story, then you can give out the right, um, you know, discipline uh, based on what's happening. You know, we have children who are living in shelters. We have children who are homeless. Um, we have children who walk the street all night long. We have children who come to school only to eat. you got to get the story before you just suspend based on what you heard. And so that's what I try to do, you know. And then based on the story, we make sure we set them up with the right uh, people to help them um, in the meantime so that we can mitigate any outside enforces um, so they can come to school and focus on education. With this particular book, I did. I share stories of women who I've met uh, and, and dealt with throughout as a counselor, uh, working as a therapist in a homeless shelter, you know, mothers in the school. I took a little bit of all their stories and I share that in this book just so other single mothers can see that if this single mother has done it, you can do it too. And so that's, that's what I did. To me, that's a 100% correct. You have to, um, every opportunity you can, um, show the students that what's happening in society is going to affect you. Because, you know, high school only lasts four years. And we want to prepare you not just for high school. We want to prepare you what's going to happen after high school, what you're going to face. And so I particularly like to sit down with my young men, um, show them how to get city jobs. I show them how to apply for city jobs because I want them to know that if you're not going to college, then we have to prepare for life because once high school is over, no one is going to be thinking of you as a cute little boy no more. You are a grown man and you're expected to make it in society. So I want to at least help um, with that. So we always share stories about, you know, how what the president is doing now is going to affect you later down the road. Um, you, you have to incorporate that within the conversations you have with the students today. Well, you know, it's interesting because uh, when people begin to know that I was writing a book, uh, most of them assume that it was going to be a church book. It was going to be a religious book. Uh, and it's totally not. You know, I grew up at 26 in Allegheny. You know, I, you know, went to school, you know, in criminal justice, uh, went to Temple University and, uh, you know, surrounded by stuff. Uh, as a pastor, I did not want to write a religious book because I realized there's a lot of religious books on the market today. You know, there's some great writers and not to take anything away from them. I wanted to come with my own piece to empower people. And so I also wanted to not um, put in 
the book where I'm judging people because I want this book to be read by everyone. You know, Muslim sisters, Muslim single moms, Jewish single moms. You know, so you know you you you'll find scripture placed throughout, uh, but it's not heavy on scripture. You know, this talks about just the whole real life dynamic of what single mothers face today. And so, yes, I try to inspire um, as a pastor. Uh, I always try to help, uh, but I also don't want to be judgmental. You know, um, you know, oftentimes you run into people in the church or pastors that, you know, they're very judgmental. You know, they, they look down their nose upon people, not realizing that you was just there yourself. You know, you know I can never judge any young lady um, who had a baby out of wedlock. You know, you must love them, embrace her, embrace the child, because that's your community. That That's your daughter. She, she, you didn't give birth to her, but that's your daughter. That's your sister. And I think that if we all do that um, as a community, we can make our community better. So, uh, you know, I just want to inspire and uplift and uh, empower single mothers, but not preach to them. I want to just give them real life examples of what I believe they need in order to raise a single, you know, raise a son. Uh, my wife, uh, this book, really got done because of my wife. Uh, she said to me, uh, I started this book literally 10 years ago. Uh, this book was really an ode to my mother. You know, it was me writing a thank you letter to my mom for raising me um, the way she did. And uh, my wife kept saying, you know, for, for years, the book sat dormant. You know, I, I couldn't get through a couple of chapters, I had writer's block, uh, didn't know, you know, what's direction to go. And my wife kept saying to me, baby, finish the book. Dear, they need it. The world needs that book. And she will always challenge me, baby, finish the book. I'm telling you. And so she has been my biggest support system. Uh, my two daughters, uh, they are my cheerleaders. And, uh, you know, my wife is the reason that this book has been completed and is now coming to the market. You know, just because of her pushing me and saying, baby, the women need this book today. I can't talk about it, but I've completed the research for my next book. And, um, you know, I deal with, in particular, young fatherless daughters at school. And so, you know, I feel like the Lord has pressed upon me um, to go in a new direction for our daughters today. And uh, I'm dealing with young ladies all the time in relationships who are in abusive relationships in high school. Uh, I'm dealing with young ladies who don't know their fathers. I'm dealing with young ladies who are looking for someone to love them. And so I began doing my research about a year ago, and uh, so I can't really talk about it, you know, quite yet. Uh, but in due time, you know, we, we the workings have already been laid uh, for my next book. You know, for me, I would just like to say that, you know, the most important thing that I can leave with you is that you share um, communication with your children. Uh, you spend as much time with your children. Uh, make sure you place them in a healthy environment. Anything that's not healthy for your child uh, will be played out in their life. Uh, and as a parent myself, you know, the amount of time I spend with my children, uh, no one can ever take it away from me. And they need that growing up to know that dad is there, to know that mom is there, to know that we care about them. And so I challenge and I push all parents um, to spend as much quality time with your children. Uh, make sure you share uh, healthy communication. Make sure they're in a healthy environment. And make sure you push them towards their success because all children have been born to succeed, but they may need someone to push them. And as parents, my job is to be right behind my children pushing them towards their success. You know, I, I think for me is that because I see so many sisters on a daily basis, rather, you know, when I was a social worker, I work with them, advocate for their child in court. You know, at the school, the mothers come see me crying about their sons. Uh, and so one of the things I just wanted to give them something to inspire them, to challenge them, you know, because there's some things that we as parents, we don't always get right. 
Uh, and sometimes your children will beat you up without even telling you. They will ignore you. Uh, they will not hang around you. And sons internalize them. And so I want to give mothers an inside look or feel to what their sons are thinking, even when they don't express it to them. And so that's very important to me that, you know, mothers get it. You know, mothers, you, you know, you take these principles, you learn from them. You know, of course, there's a whole, there are 20,000 more principles you can use. I just want to take the seven that I work with, I see my mother use on me, and that I work with, with other single mothers in society, and try to narrow it down to give you something to empower single mothers with. You know, I think that, you know, you have to give young men a safe space to um, allow themselves to be emotional. Um, one thing about young men, even in the hood, um, we are taught, you know, not to express ourselves, not to cry, to hold our feelings. And, and the truth of the matter is that hurts young men. And so when young men have a safe space and they know that you're not going to judge them for being emotional, then they will feel that they can express themselves and still, um, you know, be the man that they are. Um, I think one of the great things that we can do is to let our sons express themselves, no matter how they feel, at any time. That is a way they communicate to you, to let you know how they feel. They could be hurt. They could be sad. If you don't give them that, they're going to hold that thing in. And oftentimes, it can come out on the negative side because they never got an opportunity to express themselves in a positive manner. So expressions are good. We want that. But we have to create a safe place where um, our young men can feel safe enough uh, to be vulnerable before you. Because that's not what we're taught. That's not what we learn. We learn not to be vulnerable. We learn to be a man. We learn to hold it all in. Uh, but the truth of the matter is we all need to cry every now and again. The, uh, this is my book, uh, Seven Successful Principles for Single Mothers Raising Sons. And uh, the cover design uh, was done by a young man out of New York named DeMarcus. Uh, he does wonderful, wonderful work. Um, I literally share with DeMarcus uh, just my vision, my title um, for the book, and uh, instantly a vision popped in his head of a cover design. And uh, usually he'll make three or four, but this was the first design that he sent me, and I was like, bro, you're done. This is, this is awesome because, you know, I really just wanted to share just with people, you know, that this book is for everybody and the cover jumps out at you. And so I'm excited about uh, just this book and the working with uh, DeMarcus. And uh, I told him, uh, bro, me and you all together, all my books, I'm using you for now. on. And uh, so, yeah, DeMarcus is a great young man to work with. Great graphic artist, great designer, and uh, just a great young man. I'm available um, through Instagram, Antonio D. Anderson, Facebook, and AntonioDAnderson.com. And so you can reach me anyway on Twitter, uh, Antonio at 2937. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing from all of you. And uh, thank you for having me on today. Hello, I'm Rachel Slaughter, the Executive Director of Literacy University. Real Education TV. We will tackle sensitive issues plaguing public education. This groundbreaking show celebrates real learning, real education, teachers in the trenches, and real results. Our viewers will be riveted by our discussions with administrators and students in the middle making decisions. By tackling sensitive subjects, we will eat the elephant in the room one bite at a time. Red, Real Education TV. Said on that. Yo, what's up?
what's up? You know what it is. It's your man, the indicator. Holla. Holla. Tune in, man.